everyone. Welcome to Long Arm Wednesday. I'm Laura Lynn of the Mom and Pop Quilt Shop and we're very happy to see you here today. Today we're working on a kind of a reverse project. It's going from the long arm to a weekend project. So in this pattern that I got from my friend and Gildy, um, uh, she it was on the free table so anyway she decided to share it. We've done this one right here. We were calling it the hobo bag and then this one right here is a, um, it just says you know like an overnight bag or like a little duffel bag or something like that. So when it said here you could use pre-quilted fabric. So I thought that would be a great idea to do that bag in with a pre-quilted fabric. So this is one I've already done. It's got a very shiny, shiny blue on the top side here and then just this normal uh, white with gray and a little bit of shine. I have a whole roll of it, like a big, big roll of fabric of this. So it's nice to be able to use it for uh, mock-ups and it's pretty. I can still try and sell it or use it or give it away as a gift. So it's still pretty. Um, but this uh, blue here is very silky. It's very silky. So this is kind of the size that I need. This is the pattern. I've already made one and cut it out. So this is the pattern shape. So when I built out the second one, instead of using it as a whole cloth, I thought I'll do a bunch of squares together. So I have 64 five inch squares sewn together in a manner that will fit this pattern once I go to lay it out. Because on this, um, there's like a center line here, you flip the pattern on the fold, so you have to make sure. So these two, the longer sides here is going to be the front, it's like this side here and this side here of the bag. And then these corner part here is going to be your outside. That's your outside flap. So if you were thinking about it in a certain manner or you had a directional fabric, you know, just kind of keep that in mind. Uh, so what I've done is, like I said, I put 64 squares together and just very randomly, just purple, lovely purples. And then on the back fa uh, fabric here, here, I'll show you the pattern piece so you can see what I was talking about. Okay, so that's how I'm going to lay it out. Actually, I'm going to get rid more of my half part there. And then I, that's going to be on a fold and I just made sure that I once placed on the fold, flipped and I know I have enough to cover that whole pattern and then some, you know, because obviously I didn't need this extra bits here, but that's the pattern. It works really well and I'm very, look forward to the weekend project so you can see it come together. I'm going to do the blue one ahead of time so you can see it right away, okay? And uh, yeah, if you want to pick up the pattern, 3171 by uh, Quick Sew. So, and uh, we'll be doing all of them eventually. So we've done this one, we'll do this one, and then sometime during the summer, we'll do those two. Get them all done, okay? So instead of doing a Walt stitch out, like I did on that one, you can tell it was feathers. Those are lovely feathers, Walt did that. Um, I just thought I'd just do a little bit of heart, swirl, meander, star, kind of just fill it in because I want it to be a fun bag no matter which way you look at it. I don't want it to be somewhat directional. So as I'm sewing down here or stitching down here, I have to make sure my hearts are going the other way, that sort of thing. Like that'll be a, a very conscious thought. I thought about just doing whatever, but you know, I'm always doing whatever. So let's put a little rhyme or reason to it, shall we? <laughs> all right, so 12 stitches per inch. I know I don't need to come up all the way here, but I just want to fill it in. So I know when I go to cut my pattern out, there isn't this one little section that I didn't stitch because I didn't think the pattern was going to go there. If you want, chalk it out so you know exactly where you're going. You're not going to waste anything. These little bits and bobs left over will be great for kindergartners. They'll, they'll love all that little stuff. So, all right. So it's a bit of a reach at first, but you know, you'll get into the swing of things. You know, and do it densely, do it thick, do it whatever it is that you want to do. Okay. And I'm just filling it in. Hopefully you can see it with the thread and being on the purple. And I'm not keeping it too small or too big. I just want to be as about as consistent as I can get throughout the whole project, like all my squares here. Okay. Just filling her in and the loops and the ups and downs and the back and forth get you wherever you need to be. Okay. And then just fill it all in. So then what we're going to do is we're going to put it together on the weekend project. So stay tuned for that so you can see it all come together. It does require straps, which I chose to do in non-quilted material. Okay. And a zipper. 
So there's no pockets, though you could easily add pockets on this side. You know what I mean? Do another set of stick, or do fill this all out, quilt the whole thing, and then this ends up being your pocket. You can make a little pack, pocket pattern from that. Put a little zipper on it, little Velcro, whatever. Just bind up the top, or do like a little flipping, you know, seal the edge sort of thing. You could easily put pockets in this. And maybe I'll try and do that because I have some of the blue material left over. Maybe I'll try and put a pocket in on the blue one. That way I can show you guys that it's possible. I'm pretty sure it is. You know, and this thread really shows up on this purple. It's so pretty. I know we were going to do a Humboldt quilt today with the binding on the long arm, but I, they were very time sensitive and they're right over there. One is already gone uh, and they need to get mailed out as soon as possible. I'm literally just waiting for the ladies to come and get it later today and they will be off to get bound and then to their new home. So uh, I, we will catch up on that idea of doing the binding on the long arm next week, okay? I'm sorry for the delay. But uh, the Humboldts were uh, quilts for Saskatchewan Broncos. So they really needed to get out. So that was my focus the whole weekend, was getting those quilts done. Each one has a different pattern. My friend uh, Mary Jo said to take some pictures and she said she would put it in our um, little get to know your community here uh, flyer or newspaper that we put out every summer. And she said, just make sure you get a couple pictures and if you can of your guild mates and stuff, because we were chatting about it on our little chicken adventure. So, and I went, thank you so much. That's awesome to bring notice to that. And lots will be thankful. I love how we all kind of come together as a community. We're a little, not necessarily tight knit, but there's not a lot of us. When you think of some guilds are really big. Ours is only about 40, 45. So, you know. I think we did awesome with the silk six quilts and I know I know they were all very happy to that the the quilt shop was uh, donating the batting and the quilting for it so and I thought they all turned out quite lovely. Very gender neutral stitch outs too I did like um, chevrons and there's um, like a wave and uh, leaves, there's one with maple leaf and then one with every leaf that's pretty much out there. Turned out very pretty. Then the one with circles and lines. So as you can tell, you can just kind of get into the rhythm of things, You're just filling up the space, trying to keep it equal as possible, you know, within the zones, you know. And if you end up cutting a star or whatever, that's okay, because you know you got lots more on there. You know, and because I know the, the little outside parts are going to get used by little munchkins, I go in and make sure I fill it all in or try to fill it all in, you know. That's my way I can help them have some fun. Just travel on the outside here. Got a little green floof. I'm not sure how the green floof got in there, but that's okay. Oh, dead break. Guess it's going all too fast. Not always, though. It's not always the case. Okay, so clean thread. Oops, no, there's still a little bit of a fuzz on the end of that one. We would have the window open, but the road is quite noisy today. <laughs> I think everybody's out, that's why. <laughs> All right, now where did it end off? It seems like it came across here and then stopped, so I'm going to do a single stitch to bring that bobbin up. Okay, cut that thread, and then come back just a little bit further to interlock those stitches, making sure I'm keeping the previous ones that just got stitched there and locking in the new ones. Okay, there we go. 
back on track. Try and get those threads out of the way so they don't get tangled up underneath your foot. It's nothing worse than that. Love how it shows up on that purple. That is pretty. Well, there's lots of purples, but that dark one in particular. <laughs> So this should be quite fun in the end with all the quilting on it. I know I really liked the, um, the feather after it was all stitched out. It's called Goose Down Feather. It's in the Gamel Statler Stitcher Library there. It's one of my favorites. I've used it on a couple quilts of Valor and a few customer quilts. They've liked it as well. It's just a very big, long, continuous feather. And it goes all over the place. So. And I know this only comes out to about here, maybe just the tip of this. So, you know, and that's why I only cut my material for that much in the back. So I've actually very, very special material on the back here. It was donated from one of our California fans. Her name is Claudette. And uh, I opened up her box the other day and was so excited. I was like, it was Christmas time around here. I was doing a happy dance. There's so much in the box. It was like, my goodness, is it my birthday? Nobody told me. Um, so I found, I came across this fabric that she had tucked in there for me to use in any way I, I, show, I chose. And boy, did I choose it. I love it. And I think it would make an awesome inside to this bag. Or this could be the inside and the other side could be the outside. I mean, it's completely up to you. This is why with, with quilted fabric, you have that choice. And it wouldn't take too much to make it a reversible. You know what I mean? You just have to think about the process first and uh, be able to go from there. You know, do some tweaking in the designing and how it goes together. Love that purple. Yeah, I figured get into the scraps one more time since we're we're getting really close. I did a little bit more than I anticipated on the uh, purple Lone Star before our live stream on Sunday. So you'll have to <laughs> you'll have to see how much I did. <laughs> but I'm very excited. Once once pinning those seams together at that quarter inch and making sure they're kind of doing that little cross. I found it so much easier to get those like parallelogram sort of things put together. It was so much easier, like way less stress. And I was like, ah, oh, finally I got this, you know? And some of my seams were pretty bang on. Well, I'd say most of them after I got that. So very excited to be doing that. All right, so as you can tell, that's what I'm going to be doing. Just put her over this way so I can stop on the outside. And you will have to check out the weekend project to see how this lovely bag comes together. Okay? I'm just going to stop right there. Okay. Because when you think about it, here, I'll bring the other one back a little bit. This, if this is the, uh, the two sides, like whether you choose to do the light and the whatever, it doesn't matter. This is the top, okay? So you put your little zipper in there. So we're gonna do a little bit of overlapping. And then this is the side part, which comes right up to there. So perfect, so it's a great size when you think about it. It's a really handy dandy size for even quilt guilds. If you've got a little sewing machine, sewing machine can go in there. Uh, a little knit bag, where you're keeping all your yarn, kids toys when they come over, bathtub toys in the bath, you get 100 ideas. And you don't even have to put the zipper in if you don't want to. You can just kind of make your little strap. The straps go across this way underneath, they get attached so they can hold up on top here. So very excited and fun and, and looking forward to doing this. So yeah, so check that out and we will see you on a weekend project. Okay, so take care everybody and we'll see you soon. Bye. Enjoy your Wednesday.